Hello, and welcome to the Drum History Podcast. I'm your host, Bart Vanderzee, and today I am honored to be joined by Mr. William LeClaire of Ebonor Drums. Will, welcome to the podcast. Thanks, Bart. I'm very happy to be here today. It's a pleasure. Yes, uh, I, I have heard the name of Ebonor quite a bit uh, in the past, but more and more recently. So I'm excited to get you on uh, because it's cool to see a, a, a young-ish brand growing in uh, in the drum world. So first off, congrats for your success, man. Your Thanks. hard work is paying off. Thanks, man. It's, uh, it's absolutely. It's so much appreciated. Uh, yes, it's uh, it's an honor to be here today to to share the passion about the drums and, and give the the history of uh, Ebenor drums. It's uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not old. I started the company at 21, so I'm 30 now. So it's uh, yeah, okay, young, okay. but uh, we're gonna we have beautiful experience on the drum building. Yes, so. Yeah, very cool. That's uh, yeah. I'm 33, so we're pretty close to the same age, and it's uh, it's it's very neat to see young people doing things and starting their own brand because it's uh, it's daunting at first. But um, uh, before we start, I want to give a quick mention to uh, two people who have suggested you, which is always a good sign when you're yeah. you're re you're recommended twice uh, by different people. So thank you to Brandon Green, who uh, you're in Canada. I should mention that you're in Quebec yep. or Quebec, um, and and. Uh, so is Brandon, and he recommended you. And actually, the other guy, uh, Jay Kulkarni, looking yeah, at how to pronounce Jay. his name here, Jay, super nice guy, emailed in and recommended you as well. So thank you to Brandon and uh, Jay for suggesting yeah. you. I, I love, I love when that happens. Thanks, um, guys. Yeah, thanks. Yes, absolutely. Um, so, Will, let's just hear it, man. So, Ebonor drums, beautiful drums. If if people haven't seen them, I recommend that they go to your website and follow along, which I'll read off is Ebenor Percussion, E-B-E-N-O-R Percussion.com, just in case you want to follow along. But uh, Will, take us back to the beginning, man. How did this all yeah. start? Yeah, so Ebenor Drums, yeah, for sure. St everything started at the passion. So I'm a drummer. Uh, I, I grew up uh, on a farm from uh, my parents. Uh, my parents had a business uh, a little farm with uh, horses and everything, a B&B &B experience. So I grew up there and the um, business thing came from there. Uh, I learned a lot on the on the farm with, from my parents, the good and the bad things. And uh, at the age of, of 12, they decided to buy me a, a drum set. So uh, I literally ca it, it literally came a passion and uh, I was playing uh, the drums when I had the chance because there was always people at the, at the farm to uh, to visit us and uh, be uh, be in the B and B. So uh, I found uh, some some place during the day to play the drums. And um, my father is the uh, is a really good manual skills man. So he he taught me a lot of uh, beautiful skills uh, making. Uh, beautiful thing when I was young. So uh, the passion of making some things or and the the passion of the music started at a young age. And um, mm -hmm. I decided to go at in the mechanical engineering in Sherbrooke uh, to study there. So uh, yes, I learned a lot on uh, making all, a lot of stuff, metal process and everything. So. I can bring my drums with me in the, my studies and I continue to practice and play in, with some people there. So, but I, during my studies, I decided to, to focus more on drum building. I did so much research, research on, the, <laughs> on the website and YouTube and everything to learn about drum building. So the passion of building drums started there a lot uh, with my good friends, Anthony and the, the, uh, me and I, he and, and I, were, were always on uh, looking at drums, where SGC true drums, and looking how <laughs> how, how people were make, making the drums and looks yep. on the video on YouTube and everything. So we 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 do we did some um, a trip to uh, uh, to see uh, our good friends uh, precision precision drums. So yeah, it was fun to 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 make the passion about drum building grow there. Yeah. And, uh, well, you know, it's interesting that you're you're saying like uh, SJC and Truth, and you look at these brands because that was very. I mean, we grew up around the same time of that was yeah. that like 2010s kind of like uh, explosion of those boutique brands. Mm -hmm. 
which I think kind of paved the way for not to say, I mean, SJC is like one of the biggest drum builders in the world. They're, they yeah, make yeah. amazing stuff. So do a lot of those boutique brands, but it's almost like it paved the way for like, there's now like a next tier of builders who were more like you and like A and F and these brands mm-hmm. that are a little bit more like yeah. artisanal and yeah. raw and real as opposed to like crazy over the top. Yeah, that, that's Fair the to thing. Say. Yeah, that's, that's the yeah. thing because making custom drums was more uh, like the SGC thing, the true custom drums and everything. Do the, uh, take a good drum shell, make the beautiful finish and put parts on it and makes a, a drums that you want to have a look a sound and make all custom and that's that that's a there's a lot of uh, that in the uh, a couple of years yeah. ago so um, yeah my studies and uh, uh, after that um yeah i decided to 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 do a, a little um study in the business and after that i did some uh, some research uh, for a place here in quebec if there's not another uh, place where I can work in that uh, drum building thing. So uh, I discovered that uh, Aya Drums was was in Quebec at that time. Uh, they were mainly uh, originally from Vancouver, like a lot of people know. But uh, in 2012, I think, yeah, they were in uh, in Quebec, and I decided to to send my um, uh, an email there to that I wanted what to work with them and uh, I get a job and uh, started to work with them but I will not do the whole story of AIA drum because uh, there's a lot to say but I worked there and I worked with I had the chance to work with um, not uh, not a lot of people know that but I work with uh, AIA Dr- AIA Ray AIA yeah. so uh, I had the chance to work with them but I have so much respect for the owners and where they at at the moment where the what I have uh, studied there but um, yeah and the thing is that with Hebenor drums, I wanted to make some something completely different uh, from uh, that kind of drums. So um, yeah, uh, after uh, after that, I decided to start Hebenor uh, when I was 21 years old uh, in 2014, hmm. uh, September 2014. So uh, so in this this September, it will it will be our 10th anniversary already so it's a uh, wow it's congratulations Thanks. that's huge Thanks. 10 yeah, years that... man that's awesome <laughs> yeah so um so uh yeah that's where uh the the company the name ebenor came to me because uh, all that passion for drums that passion of uh drum building and the um, business side uh i know the good and the bad about business and i always want to to make my own business and at uh, was at that age that I decided to to start Ebenor. So, um, hmm. yeah. Well, what does what does Ebenor does that mean something in particular? Yeah, that's a good question to to and a good thing to mention because there's a lot of people want to have to know that. So, I took uh, when I was doing the uh, the brainstorming about the name, uh, uh, I came with two words. So I took in French we call uh, woodworking uh, ebenisterie. So I took. Uh, the first part of the word ebenisterie, the ebihi, and uh, the other word is uh, sonor. So I took the end of sonor and put this, these two words together and it came with ebenor. Okay. So you start the brand, you're 21 years old, which I mean, yeah, and no nothing. That's pretty wild, man. That's I, you're yeah, very young to do that. No money, <laughs> no place to build <laughs> drums. So uh, I, I grew the, the company step by step. That that was the main um, uh, the, the main thing with me. It's always step by step. So the first step was to sell my PDP drum set <laughs> at that time, and make uh, and make some cash uh, to uh, to give a cash down to to uh, to borrow some money at the bank and buy some tools to uh, to work with uh, the wood. So yeah, um, yeah um, I decided to to start the company. Um, making my own drum shell. That was the, the main thing that I want when I decided to start Hibinoids to have my own sound identity. So it's I decided to to buy some tools and uh, I was a, a mechanical in- engineer, so it was not new for me to uh, to work with tools and everything. The, what is was new to, it was to work with wood. Uh, I hadn't 
not a lot of knowledge about wood, but had a lot of friends who work with wood and did who did some studies in woodworking and everything. So um, uh, I took a lot of people in my project to to start my our own process to make our uh, drum shed that are uh, made with uh, the uh, uh, stave technique. So stave method, uh, all sure. blocks and everything. So we work only with uh, North American wood, uh, mainly from Quebec, maple, cherry, walnut. So yeah, that's wow. where we, we started the company and uh, it built our uh, beautiful base for us to to have our mm-hmm. sound in our, in our drum shell. So yeah. Yeah, which I mean that, I think as as listeners of this show, people usually know that that not every brand makes their shells. Absolutely nothing wrong with a brand not no, making their own shells. No, because but yeah, if you I, do, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it's. I have so much respect about all the uh, the other brands. Like I, I mentioned, uh, I, I can I think about SGC. I think about so much brands in the U.S. Here in Quebec, we have some beautiful uh, drum brands too, but. I wanted to make to have it. It, it's, it is more about the control, quality control, the um, supply chain control to make our own thing. And I will probably mention later, but it's the same with the hardware. Hardware today because we make our our, our logs, our hoop, our floating brackets, and everything in house at now. So, but I will talk about this maybe later. So yeah. it's more about supply chain and everything. And um, so. Uh, yeah, but yeah. so much respect about the killer uh, and other brands who, who use uh, some some of that those shells. So. This week's episode is brought to you by my friend Mr. Jeff Burke and the Rogers Drums USA Facebook group. Jeff has built an unbelievable community around the love of vintage Rogers drums. I can tell you from many firsthand experiences with Jeff that he is the real deal and is extremely authentic and just a super nice guy. And that comes through across all of the Rogers Drums USA group. The group is all about friendship and mixing younger generations and older generations of Rogers enthusiasts together to get everyone in the same spot. Jeff is a proud Rogers collector with an enormous collection, and he's also working as a consultant for the new Rogers drums and is doing a great job with that. Rogers Drums USA is all about spreading the message of Rogers legends Joe Thompson and Ben Strauss and keeping the history of Rogers alive. So find them on Facebook at Rogers Drums USA. Just type that in and you'll find it. And be sure to join Jeff on the enormous big comfy couch that is always at the drum shows when Rogers uh, USA is there. And you can sit down, hang out with Jeff, take a load off. I certainly did recently at the Chicago show and had an absolute blast hanging out at their booth and getting to relax for a little bit. So uh, be sure to find them at the, the drum shows and say hello and tell them you heard them, uh, heard this ad on drum history and just say hi to Jeff. So thank you to Jeff and the Rogers Drums USA group for sponsoring this episode. So you started building wooden drums first. Did you start with just snares or did you build a kit or did you go, how, how did the first, Yeah, first, you know, first order in 2000, oh man, 2014 was a cherry wood snare drum, uh, 14 by seven, I remember. It was a guy here in the, near uh, Lac Megantic. So uh, yeah, cherry wood snare drums. Uh, we we were only um, work with wood at that time. Uh, metal drums came after uh, in 2017, but uh, it was a snare drums, and the order right after was a, a beautiful a black walnut kit uh, from a, a, a good friend. So yeah, it's it was. Mainly, I was working only with North American wood, like I was saying, and it's. Uh, I was using a lot of oil finish, uh, using uh, generic parts, uh, triple flange hoops, logs, and everything. So, uh, the yeah, so it's a pretty pretty fun uh, start with the company when people wanted to to buy drums, and I I, I went step by steps. So the the first steps to make to spread the brands more here in Quebec was to uh, to get um, ambassador. So I thanks so much for my amba- ambassadors here in Quebec, uh, uh, Olivier, Luc, uh, Dominique, Jonathan, Steve. They are so uh, so helpful for, to spread the brands here in Quebec and on social media. So yeah, yeah. I get a lot of uh, ambassador here. So. Well, I think that like, 
uh, Josh Allen from Indie Drum was talking about this a couple episodes ago about like you can do marketing, you can buy ads, you can do all this stuff, but like yeah. really the best thing and it's slow at first is just create quality drums and word will spread and our community will 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 talk about things. And I find it more and more that you see like mm -hmm. a drum shop post videos of you. That's the best kind of marketing, a forum. People are posting and talking about you. Your yeah. snares can't beat that. Yeah, the organic thing, uh, it's the, the best to, to to spread the brands in the drum drummers community, for sure. Yeah. Um, like I was on the road a lot, a lot. When I started the company, I was in some little drum show here in Quebec, the International Drum Festival in Quebec from Ralph Angelillo. Uh, I was uh, a lot in the 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 show with uh, drummers. I was in Quebec, Montreal. I was in Montreal every month. So I was I was doing three hour drive <laughs> every month to go wow. to Montreal, meet drummer uh, at some uh, studio and showcase my drums, the Urban Art drums. So yeah, it's a, it's it was a lot of work, the first five years of uh, of business uh, to to develop the brands and li literally sure. try to survive. But now we are at a different step, and it's uh, I structure the the business uh, so much differently. So I learned a lot during those first five years. It's uh, yeah, it's a a good challenge for. Uh, People want people yeah. wants to 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 uh, to launch a brand or something. It's, uh, yeah, but sure. it's so fun to so fun to do. It is fun to do, and I I think there's like a big thing in like the drum world or the business world where people talk a lot about how failure is so important. Not to say that you mm -hmm. failed or whatever, but you learn from these failures. But I think it's also important to say that failure sucks and it's really miserable in the moment and it's not pleasant and you that's what you need to get through of like because yeah. people really praise like you you really do only learn from your mistakes that you make i did a lot and that's how you grow <laughs> but it's not it's not fun at the at the time when there's when there's things that are uh Happened. it's a tough road yeah that's right yeah i, I did I, I learned a lot about my mistakes and drum building on, on the business side. So, but it, they 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 are always there to to you grow up when you you do mistakes. So, I, I always do mistakes, but I learn a lot about sure. them. So for sure, yeah. Yeah. Well, on the note of like successes, let's talk the first five years. Or I mean, even with the podcast, I have like moments where people ask the question of like. What is something that's like there? What was like a you went from here to here moment? And for me, it was Mike Johnston sharing it, my show on the Modern Drummer podcast. It was like, that's a notable mark of like, that worked out well. Yeah. What about you? What's your first like this? You jumped up like that was a big move uh, forward. A big move was, uh, yeah, uh, the one that came, came, come to my mind. It's the uh, in 2020. Yeah. 2020, a big moment was the when uh, Todd Zuckerman uh, decided to buy a snare drums from from us. But I decided to to get contact with him, and he, he's an, he's a he's a, so a gentleman, and he uh, yeah he decided to buy the Narenda Copper snare drums, and he was so, uh, so gentle to to do some video for us about the Narenda nice. Copper. So. It really turns out another game for the international sales and everything. It, it gives so much credibility uh, when Todd uh, show show his drum on uh, the snare drums of the week on Drumio. So uh, yeah, uh, yeah, he's, he's a gentleman. That is, uh, yeah. Thanks, Todd, for what, what you did. It's uh, so appreciated. Yeah. So perfect example. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Where, but but you earned it. You didn't solicit and go out and say, do this, do this. No, you, it's which there's nothing wrong with that either. But that's cool, man. That's awesome. It came naturally. Yeah, for sure. But another thing and another game changer in the Ebenor history is the in 2019, we I just I had to to do a move because uh, when I was I had to a shop. The first shop was in Saint Romain, so uh, the little village uh, here in Quebec. It was the a garage who, from my um, a brother, uh, 
and he decided to sell the, the garage for another project. And uh, I had to find uh, another um, building to make the drums. So <laughs> uh, I had to, uh, to, uh, to search for, for another building. And I found one here in Saint Sebastian, just near uh, 10 minutes away from uh, Saint Romain. And uh, that's where we are. It's a 4,000 um, 4, square feet uh, building. So, where we, it really changed everything. The, the, all the process to build a drum is so much easier now. Uh, it's so more functional. We, so I, I bought the building. Uh, my house is in the building, but it's com completely, um, there's no communication from my house inside. Uh, to the sure. shops, so I have to go outside to, <laughs> yeah. to go to the shop. It's uh, I, I learned uh, uh, before because I was living in my shop uh, uh, in the first shop in Saint Romain. So my apartment was directly in the shop. The toilet was in the shop. So I was always too uh, close. Too close. <laughs> that was too close. So I learned about that. And I decided yeah. to split and everything when I I, 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 I bought the second building. So, but it nice. changed it changed everything uh, buying that um, that uh, that buildings. And during that time, uh, my father um, too uh, decided to come um, join the the my my um, my team, but not my team, but join me <laughs> because we yeah. are a team now. We we are two in the shop. Uh, and I have to another employee here, uh, Emil, who uh, work with me with the, um, the parts. Uh, he he sure. made a lot of parts. But my father um, decided to join me uh, to in the in the business business as the uh, uh, master builder of uh, <laughs> of the drum building parts and everything. So he's a really nice artisan. So my father, who showed me a lot when I was young, decided to join and. It was so easy to uh, to communicate with him to show him how I, I was making the drum. So is my uh, is I, I appreciate so much to work with him because uh, he works like me. So I have so yeah. is, I have so much trust in him to uh, to make the drums and develop the process more and more and more. So uh, to make drums Definitely. easier, faster, uh, and to. to to have all the quality in our drones too. So, uh, yeah, that, he must another, be very proud. Yeah. He must be very proud of you to like, you've started this, you've, you've stuck with it. You created a business and you said kind of like he's working like the way you work, but you learned probably how to do a lot of stuff from him. So you guys yeah. probably have this, I mean, your family, you have this like unspoken kind of connection, yeah, you know, that's, that's great. Right. We have, we have that, that connection and, like you said, the unspoken language because now he's working and he know what to do, how to do it, and what what is on the table now and what is the priority is that and the prior second priority is this. So yes, we do meeting meeting every week to to make sure everything uh, uh, is progress progressing goods. But uh, I have a lot of trust and I know he's proud to to work with me because it's. We, we work together every day and uh, we share so much we share so much together and uh, i am proud to 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 work with him it's a, a beautiful relation that we have so that leads to the next question of uh so yeah. we're up to with your your history i mean we're up to today things seem like they're going great i mean are are the drums you're building now uh i'm looking on your website and they're you've clearly got it down they're beautiful are are they made to order or how does that work? Do you do you make them for a shop on yeah? What's yeah, that yeah. whole process? So it's always it was always made to order. We sometimes we have uh, in stock drums, in, in stock snare drums, or I, at the moment I don't have drums in stock. I just sold it <laughs> last week. So but I I always have one kit, maybe two three snare drums uh, in stock. But it's always uh, to orders. So yeah. uh, at the moment we have, I think, twelve drum kits to make. Uh, but the things uh, in two thousand twenty, when the pandemic happened, uh, another uh, things that changed everything was the supply chain. So when the, the pandemic uh, arrived, I was about to uh, 
to buy some equipment or not equipment, but to uh, I was about to throw some money uh, to a, a company in in Taiwan uh, to make our own uh, signature hardware. But it was when the pandemic arrived, I, I, I was saying to myself, no, 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 I, I don't have to do this. I will keep my money here. And I yeah. decided to buy some uh, equipment. So uh, a product production late, uh, some tooling to make all the hardware here in the house, in the shop. So that changed everything for us. All the looks, the signature, visual signature on our drums. So we make all the logs, all the, the that are made from um, uh, brass, solid brass. Wow. So I, I have for the guys who listen, I have one here. So that's a, yeah. a brass log that we, we make on our, our late. Beautiful. And uh, I have here, I can show you here. I have here. Um, a beautiful bronze hoops. So we make all the bronze hoops, the logs and the brackets um, in the shop. The bronze hoops are uh, silver weld. So my my father decided to <laughs> to become uh, uh, a real, uh, I, I think it's a jewelry, jewelry. Uh, oh, jewel, like jewelry? Yes, that's right. So jewelry use, used a lot of silver to weld parts. So my father uh, decided to develop all that process here in the shop. So uh, wow. to make beautiful uh, bronze hoops on our drums. So all the tones Man. and the, the snare drums have that those uh, bronze hoops. We I'm very very proud of that because it's a uh, it changed everything on the supplying chain because when during the COVID it was so difficult to have parts. Oh my gosh, it was yeah. so difficult. Wild, man. I can't believe that. That's <laughs> more respect than ever because of, again, there's nothing wrong with using like like uh, no, a supplier for parts, whatever. Absolutely and I need, great. And I, I have suppliers. Yeah. I had a lot of supplier for drum parts and still have because I'm not making the tension rod. I'm not making the, the claws. And it's only that, but I have to buy the, 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 the these parts too. So uh, the heads and everything, but... Yeah, it's, yeah, but it's it's it changed everything everything because we we can I can have twelve drum kits at the moment and I have everything to make them those kits here in my shop. I just have to transform the brass on different equipment and that's what makes our I think our drums unique uh, in terms of sound and looks and uh, yeah, so it's yeah it, it changed everything when we we. We, I decided to jump into that. It was not easy uh, to to make happen because it takes money. It takes a lot of passions because you don't have the exact um, uh, pro final project when you, you start. So it takes a lot of passions to, to make those, sure. those drum parts. Sure. Uh, but I'm looking on your website here. You have there's a cherry wood drum set with smoke burst finish, heavy feather collection, which we got to talk about those. And then there's black walnut. Yeah. I mean, just so everyone knows, these drum sets are like thirty two hundred dollars, which that's extremely fair for a I mean, these are hand built drums, so they're not crazy priced. I mean, they're a professional high level drum set, which is very common with that price. But knowing mm -hmm. that you're making every single thing on there. Uh, that's about that's a pretty good price man that's that's yeah. very fair uh, uh, yeah and i i know how to to make drums parts and everything but the when you have to make money you have to make money to buy tools to to you have to yeah. make money to buy uh more to drum, live yeah, yeah to live <laughs> and everything to reinvest in your business but when you you want to to save it's always a time so i I, I wanted to, I know what, when I wanted to do and the way to do it is, was to, to save some time to, uh, to make the final projects and to conserve the quality of the product for sure. So, yeah, let's talk about working with aluminum, the, um, heavy yeah. feather collection. Cause I keep seeing that online. I keep seeing, uh, your snare drums in particular kits. Yes. But we all know that snare drums are like more attainable. There's something that someone can just buy and throw on their kit without fully committing to a drum set. And man, they sound great from everything I've heard online. Thanks. Uh, Thanks a lot. What's it like? I mean, the, yeah. the way you work with the metal and the finish and everything is just amazing. So uh, everything starts with uh, 
a request from from customer uh, Nick. Uh, so uh, a, a shout out to Nick uh, who uh, who wanted to have copper snare drums uh, in two thousand. I mean, I think two thousand seventeen. Yeah, and so he came to me with that request, and I was okay, man. I have to. I wanted to create a collection, so that's where our collection came with the Narenda Copper Collection. So uh, it's a copper shell that is a cold rolled and TIG welded. Uh, here we do a beautiful patina finish uh, outside and inside of the shell. It took approximately uh, uh, 8 to 12 hours to make all that beautiful crazy patina. Uh, you, for those who want to see it, you, could, you can go on, on our Instagram or on our website to see that, uh, that finish. Yeah. And what is it's fun? Awesome. Yeah, what it, it is fun with that finish is that it is unique every time. So the patterns are always different, the colors and everything. So it's a, a beautiful drums, and um, yeah, that's there's a lot of, of interest about the the drum drummers community in that product. Uh, we saw a lot of hearing a lot here in Quebec. Uh, I have some in the UK. In the in the U United States, Australia too have uh, some some nice customer uh, ar around the world. So uh, the copper was the the, the first uh, metal that where I decided to work with for snare drums. But uh, <laughs> like you like you probably know, uh, drummers are uh, wanted to know uh, if you can make a, a snares, you probably can make a, a, a drum kit. So I had a re request <laughs> yeah. to make a drum kit. So <laughs> I had yeah. to make one for uh, 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 a customer. And uh, so, but they are really expensive. I think I don't have the uh, Narenda Copper drum set on my website because it's it is just too, uh, yeah, it's, it's a long process to make, but uh, maybe in, in the next month, I will put one on my website more for the yeah for people to order it so it'd be a whole kit in that wild patina so finish it is then it is i made wow. i made i made i think three or four kits like that they are really expensive because copper is, <laughs> is so much expensive <laughs> yeah but um yeah a whole kit with that crazy uh, pattern wow. patina finish yeah and so you've got your aluminum heavy yeah. feather collection yeah, the, the, the aluminum is uh another uh, funny uh, material to work with. I, I think I, my personal um, kit uh, was because it's. I just recently s sell it, but I had one. It, it was a, a aluminum uh, kit. So aluminum is, is fun to work with. Have completely different sound from copper. Um, for those who don't know, copper is more warm. You will have more resonant uh, sound into copper. Um, but you will get that um, sharp attack, uh, a beautiful definition. So uh, into aluminum and copper, but aluminum is more drier. It's a drier sound. Uh, yeah, like an a, acrylite. That, but like, yours are much more. That's right, like an acrylite you know. or a, yeah, uh, a LM four hundred two. Yes, it is more. It is made with aluminum. But I decided to make the heavy feather collection with aluminum because uh, I'm a fan of, uh, of Ludwig, Ludwig drums, uh, especially with that John Bonham uh, snare drums, the LM402 snare drums. And that, that, that is that snare drums who inspired me to make that uh, heavy feather collection because I wanted to have heavy sound, but you, you, it is light material, so you get, you, get, you get the lightness with that. But uh, it is so much heavy, especially when you do a 24 inches kick ba bass drum. It's sure. so heavy. You get <laughs> that big power sound with beautiful sharp attack. And people who want to have that a lot of attack in their sound, aluminum is the yeah. best to use. I, I know uh, that a birch or a other woods can give that attack, but aluminum is fun when you have to something different in terms of sound, but to have that attack and powerful and two and drums, it's it's fun to do for, with uh, punk drummers, metal drummers, love that those uh, drum kits a lot. But I have some um, uh, drummers, uh, have one here in Quebec, uh, Simon, um, 
is using his heavy feather for a pop gig because he's not a heavy player. He don't play drums uh, hard, but he, you know, so we don't have to play hard to have a lot of uh, output from the, the drums. Yeah. So it's, he, he really appreciate that uh, of those drums. So the range sure. of dynamics, it's, is, it is fun to, to play. Do you do something uh, looking at them? Like they all seem to have like a bit of a patina to those as right. well. So uh, we do uh, another oxidation process on the aluminum. Uh, it takes uh, shorter times to do on that, but it, it's always unique. It is more a smoky or, um, yeah, smoky that's a good way to put it. Smoky finish on it. It's fun to, if you don't have to, if you don't have, if you don't want to have too much colors in the finish, the patina finish, aluminum is fun to, for that because it's more, um, yeah, smoky finish. I, I would say you can look at them on the on our website too. Uh, but uh, yes, it's always unique. I'll, uh, at the same time, we we can. We don't control it. We don't co we don't control the uh, how it it will happen. It depends of the humidity in the hair, uh, the the temperature of the solution that we put into it. Uh, but uh, it's always it's fun to to use that something you don't have control to it, and you put it yeah. in there and Mother Nature do what she, she wanted to do and Ex it's, uh, absolutely it's fun to do. These are really really cool. And and the w one thing and maybe you can answer this of like. How does one builder, let's say using aluminum or aluminium, whoever, depending on where you're from, uh, like how does how do you differentiate using metal drums? Like, what's your special thing with making these drums as opposed to a different aluminum snare versus a different brass snare? Yeah. How can people? Because wood, there's different styles, but how do you make these special for Ebonor? Yeah, that that's a, a nice question because in in a snare drums or drums, there's so much. Um, element in the drums that will influence the sound. Uh, first, the material that you use, uh, the thickness, uh, the edges, the, uh, the, the depth, the, the diameter, all that very elements will influence the sound, the head, the drummer, and everything. So what makes our drums special is what I decided to do is to use a, a, a thickness so the copper is uh, 116 of an inch thick, and we do a, a 45 um, angle on the uh, on the uh, sharp end mm -hmm. of the shell, uh, and it's the same with the aluminum, but it's a, a little bit thicker uh, for the aluminum. So there's not a beaded shell like the uh, acrylite or uh, other. Uh, metal snares from um, example Ludwig who have those sure. beaded shell and edges and the gauge of the um, sheet of a copper or aluminum is a uh, thinner so I I went thicker for a shell but I don't have to do those beaded things so you will have a different sound uh, when you do those beaded thing into the, the shell it make a shell a bit stronger but the the fundamental pitch go upper. So all mm. those elements will influence the sounds. So, yeah. And I think what makes our drums unique is for sure it's all that, but it's the finishes. And when you see it on the, on the, on the web, but in person, for sure, uh, all the hardware that we put on it. So we, we have, um, just to mention, we have the, uh, or brass lugs and bronze hoops. So this Ebenor signature hardware, we have it in the black finishes. Uh, we have it in the antique brass finish, like the uh, this one, like the hoops that I've shown uh, earlier. So it's a beautiful antique yep. finish that we do uh, on the, the hardware. And we have the, the brush finish on the brass. Uh, another thing that we can uh, mention to the um, uh, metal, uh, Ebenor drums. It's the uh, my new series, my new collection of drums. It's the antique brass snare drum. So uh, the snare that is very popular at the moment. I have a very cool drummer. Yeah, it that, looks like wood. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's a, a beautiful raw finish uh, antique. Yeah. Uh, so it's we we put it into um, some uh, a bat of uh, 
something that we use to do a, that oxidation on the brass uh, and get that brownish uh, finish on the shell. So it's really cool. Uh, we have some a lot of drummer that use it, and why why I decided to do that collections and it was uh, I think yeah it was two years ago yeah two years ago I was reading the books of the of uh, Dave Grohl um, the uh, storyteller I think it's that so mm -hmm. I don't, yeah and uh, sure when I was reading that book uh, I decided to to play a lot of Nirvana song and all that stuff and <laughs> the uh, and when I was hitting that a snare a snare drums I was making the the, um, the brass shell at that moment. Uh, the antique brass collection and i was playing a lot of um smell like teen spirit and uh, uh that kind of yeah. uh, what's the classic other nirvana yeah, yeah classic nirvana the uh the other song who we, you do you do a lot of flam and a lot of rim shots so yeah 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 i was okay that's i need to do a, a collection with that kind of uh brass shell so brass is beautiful uh, material to work with it's so fun to work with brass uh, it's not easy to weld uh, you have to 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 develop a good uh, process to the to weld that to have a good temperature and everything so it's uh, mm. very difficult to to weld but once you have it uh, it go pretty pretty easy so uh, yeah iron yeah. sterling iron sterling in the u.s have one uh uh of that uh, cool. collection, the anti grass. Uh, um, I had my good friend uh, Peyton Hillard too uh, in the Nashville, Tennessee, uh, who have yeah. one. There's a couple drummer here in Quebec, uh, uh, some in, in the uh, in the UK also. So uh, yes, it's a, it's a fun that's great fun, a fun snare drums to to work with because you, you can go with. It, it, Brass can do an ev everything. So when you have go-to snares to use, is uh, you go with with uh, with that brass. Uh, that brass yeah, snare. that's good to know. It's a good suggestion. They're not the cheapest snares in the world. Yeah. Any brass snare is known as just they're they're a more expensive material. But it sounds like you can use them for everything. So that's yeah. that's a great suggestion. Um, yeah. I want to talk a little bit about uh, the community, which we all love the community. We're a big part of it. But on your website, I see there's a community tab where it talks about a cool experience you do. Is this still happening? It was just before COVID or what's yeah. the what's the story with the <laughs> Ebenor community? Yeah, yeah, that was before COVID. Uh, maybe okay. uh, maybe next year I will do some things for the 10th anniversary of Ebenor because uh, every every year before COVID, I was doing the um, open doors event at the shop so uh, a lot of drummer from Montreal, Quebec, Gaspésia or around Quebec, maybe Ontario, I have some mm. from the US, from Vermont, uh, Maine come to the, the shop and hang here in the shop and try the new collection and drink beer and all that stuff and that just, sounds just, awesome. just hang and, and share and that's so much important in, in, in the community is to share about your gear. Even if it's not a Benoit, I, I am a, a gear free too. I have a, a Noble and I have AK drums. I have, so just to share about drum gear with the other drummers is so fun to, to do. So uh, yeah, it's, it was Absolutely. a nice heavens to, to put drummers uh, together uh, here and share about yeah. drums and discover new products that I have too. So yeah, I mean, it's been said before, I'll say it again. We have a very special community that is different than, uh, I mean, not that I really know. I'm not in the guitar community, but I know that our drum community of brothers and sisters of in, in the drums are, it's very special, it's, yeah, you know, it's, our bond. It's, uh, s s there's so much, so much respect here in Quebec for sure about yeah. what, the, no matter about what gear you have, no matter about where you are at, at drums, it's, there's a respect that is, so you can feel it uh, when you, you share about drums and uh, I, yeah, it's it's fun to 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 put drummers together and <laughs> see what happened after that. They're, it's like they're speaking everything and about bearing edges. Oh, what's your type of wood and everything? <laughs> yeah. So that's a kind of, that's a part of my job that I had that I love a lot to share about what I do. 
so it's always a pleasure to to have a call from drummers to explain how how I do drum because when when someone come come here to order drums or a, maybe a custom size of drums or some things, I always take time to to ask a question about what he wanted to do with, with drums, what he what he's looking for. Uh, it's yeah. all important to to know what he wants and guide him to to some things that he will enjoy. So it's important yeah. for me to do that and share. It's great. And, you know, it's just, it's also neat to hear about the community. I mean, I'm in the, you know, United States and to hear about this happening up in Canada where it's like a different community and, and you, I mean, where, where you are is mainly like French speaking. Yes, correct? French speaking. Yes. That's the main language we, that we have here, but. Uh, Which is very cool. Yeah. 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 But it's, we, we 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 speak French, but all the dr- drums word are all in English. So bearing yeah. edges and uh, all the, <laughs> your, the, the all that stuff. Or uh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah, to hear a, a string of French words and then bearing edges and yeah. then <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah. cool though. I like to hear about uh, and and I'm thinking of Asba drums, which is French French, yeah. you know, over there. But to hear about these these you know parts of the world and and here in you know our north american and the continent that's cool to hear about this but you just you it's nice to hear about these different communities and drummers and things like that but it's kind of universal yeah. our love of drums does not it, there's it no is. language barrier it crosses borders <laughs> yeah it is it is and we we had um a special drum festival here in quebec the ralph and Jibilo drum festival uh, that I, I think it was the last one uh, uh, last year, uh, but I think it was a, it's 20, 25 years anniversary. But uh, Ralph, the uh, the owner of the festival, did that kind of festivals since so much years, and he wanted to put all the drummers together, and uh, he, he he brings a lot of professional drummer Thomas Lang. <sighs> Steve Smith, all that big names at the festival to to do some clinics, and it's it was nice to have that kind of community here uh, in Quebec. But uh, yeah, uh, something cool that I can man- mention too is that that community or drum partnership is is we, we can feel it also in Canada too because uh, we have Drumio um, yes. thanks to to Jared. Um, and how the guys there, uh, it's so fun to, to, to share with them, uh, yeah. about Well, drum. you were featured on Drum EO. Yeah, Your snare yeah. was featured, which that's yes. a bump. You know what I mean? It that's is. a, that's a, <laughs> that's a nice bump. Yes. Yes. Jared, uh, I, I meet Jared for the first time, I think at the Ralph festival, uh, international festival, uh, I think two or three, uh, three or four years ago. And he said, man, if I, if you need help for something let me know we'll arrange something so uh, i think it's uh, two years ago i uh, i sent him uh, uh, an aranda copper snare drums to review uh, with uh, the guys there uh, brendan and the um uh the other, the other dave. one dave that's right so yep. uh, you can find that video uh on dromeo uh I don't know what was the the, epi- the name of the episode, but uh, it, they did sure. a re- they did a review and uh, mention us and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a funny video to look uh, to look at. I think uh, the Asba drums was there to 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 be reviewed. There's a beautiful community. I have a good friend in Canada, um, my good friend Brian Simbalak. Uh, he had the uh, uh, the store. We got the beat, so that's the name of the store. Uh, is a good friend. He he have uh, it's like a, a dealer for from uh, Ebenor dealer uh, here cool. in Canada. Yeah, so he will have our new collection, the uh, the antique brass, uh, but in full kit version. So he will have it. So for those who I think there's there's some people who watch that video. You can see the the kit of the uh, uh, of Brian right near me so it's uh, sure. it would be a beautiful, beautiful uh, antique brass uh, kit so uh, full yeah. brass shell kit yeah well i gotta ask you speaking of full kits i'm on your website under the our work section and pretty quickly you scroll down and there is a giant <laughs> drum set that is an evanor drum set that has octobons 
It's got a gong bass drum. It's got yeah. Terry Bozio, Bozio style, four toms mounted like up above you on a rack. <laughs> what is the story of this drum set? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, uh, sorry for laughing because it's oh no, it's <laughs> it was a crazy project to make. So you can you can see a a big a big big rack. So it's a Gib- Gibral- Gibraltar rack. So I did all the uh, the racks myself. So I took all the parts or the and the 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 parts who was so difficult to do is is to order those parts from my uh, uh, distributor here in uh, yeah. Gibraltar. I wait so much long about all those snare t- snare stands, all those uh, thumb suspension and everything. So sure. So that's a, uh, I think there's. 25 uh, piece of drums. So bass wow. drums. There's timbales. <laughs> timbales. So, yeah. okay. It's a 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18 toms. Two bass drums, 222 bass drums. So uh, there's a Nuremberg the Copper snare drum, 14 by 6 and a, a 5 and a half. There was a, a Bird's Eyes Maple sna- a snare drums. Because yep. that kit is all made of bird's eye maple. So all the octobans, all the toms, the bass drums are made from from solid bird eyes maple. <laughs> wow. And it's all stave. Is it it's all? It's all staves. So the octobans, <laughs> you can see the octobans are stave. So the I think there was a 24 inches long octoban. <laughs> oh my god. So it's this a, is crazy. It's a big kit. So there was four tabans, yeah. two timbales, and a gong drum, plus a second, yeah, like you mentioned, a second uh, line of eight, ten, twelve, thirteen toms upper. So <laughs> man, <laughs> that's a crazy. Like one. for for people who are listening and not watching, I mean, it is literally imagine a rack like you normally see on a drum set in front of you and then a second tier of a rack where you would have things hanging and then there's a third layer of the rack it's almost like a cage i mean it's it is it's awesome you have you have drums all around you so it's a it's a you like terry bow is your kit but yes only two bass drums Was this for a famous drummer or was this just no. for someone who's a big enthusiast? Uh, a big enthusiast and passion drummer. Yeah, yeah. That's he, awesome. Well, uh, congrats to them. Yeah, Seriously. yeah. I, when he came to me with that uh, project, I was, man, you, you're not serious. It's not It's not a serious project. It's, do you have money for that? <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? Uh, is it? I wasn't yeah. going to be at the, be the. I wasn't going to ask and be rude, but uh, holy cow, this has got to be an expensive drum it set. It is. It is really expensive because the rack, all the rack, the, the tubes, the, uh, the the brackets, the uh, oh, it's uh, it costs a lot. So, but I think the kit took me. But we, I did. I give him to my customer. I give him. Uh, I think seven months to build that kit. So we we build that kit, but, and other kits for sure. Uh, sure I think we had sure. four or five kits at the same time. We took seven months to to order the parts and build everything. So it's a high gloss finish too, uh, chrome, cr- uh, black chrome hardware, triple flange hoops. Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh, the guy said, "Okay, let's go. <laughs> I have money and let's make." <laughs> I have. He said, "I want to have all the drums you can make, all the sizes." Oh man! So it's I, a showpiece for you. It's a. It's a. It's a it display is. for your website. It's an absolute. You're scrolling and you stop and go, "Whoa! Oh, what's that?" That is. Yeah. It is amazing. What is that? That's exactly right. <laughs> every time but, I put every time I put that kit on Instagram, I get like thousand and thousand thousand likes <laughs> that yeah kid. which is good can't yeah. do it too much but it's nice to share like once a year or something yeah um as we get close to the end here i mean you you've learned a lot is there any tips or tricks that you would give to people who are interested in getting into the world of drum building you're 10 years in what's your like biggest you know i wish i knew this at the beginning kind of stuff yeah for i i'm not i'm not like uh yeah I, I learned a lot of about drum buildings, but I have a lot to learn too. Uh, 
I'm always learning. So for someone who wants to, to learn more about drum buildings, just try, try to do some things like to, um, to tune your drums. If you don't try to tune it, nobody will do it. So just, just try to make yep. some drums. If I started to make drums with, um, refurbishing projects. So, uh, all the wraps, uh, the bearing edges on whole, old lotteries or single limb. So, and when I started the company too, I, I was offering, uh, a refurbishing, um, uh, services, but I don't do it because I have now, because I, uh, I don't do it anymore because I have too much Ebenor drums to do. But uh, yeah. for someone who wants to to know about more drum build, build, building, it's to look at their drums and just dive in to the drums to to uh, put down all the old wares on your drums and everything, and to it's just to play with the your drums and modify some things or do bearing just It's a good way to start uh, drum building in the interest. It's put hands and I haven't, I, I learned a lot on my day-to-day -day job, uh, here, uh, in my shop to, to try something, but I learned a lot to, to listen to, uh, videos or to share with other uh, drum builder because it's, it's, they are all drummers. So it's, uh, there's a, a nice drum builder community out there. Uh, sure. all around the world so it's uh, it's fun to share with drum builders it's uh, we don't have nothing to th there's no secret it's if you want to to find something on the internet now you will find it so it's it's for me i always want to share about my works with other builders or give give, give them some something to try or a, a way to to start so to look at something yeah so uh, absolutely and nowadays it's it's I don't want to say tough. It's it's a good thing and it's tough because you have to be your own you have to do all your marketing too. You have to do the social media, you have yes. to do YouTube, you have to do all that stuff, which but, is very important. But the thing is that uh, that's the thing that I love of my job is because I always do something different. I al I don't do always okay, make the um, same logs 5 days a week. It's Okay, I do some logs. Okay, I have to to, to give some calls to do to customer, or I have to order some parts. Oh, wait, I have to finish some today. I have to yeah. to to go to the paint shop. So it's it's fun to to do always stuff that are different like that. And uh, yes, it's a it's it's a beautiful job. And it's the thing is, I think that the hardest hardest part is the business side because when you sure. You drum building, it's for me, it's the easiest uh, part. The business, it's it's all it's difficult because you have to deal with uh, problems, you have to deal with cancellation, you have to deal with back orders, <laughs> yeah, taxes, uh, and taxes, things like that. and everything. But it's not, it's funny because uh, I start every year telling myself I want to have fun doing drums and manage the, the business, and it's. Sometimes it's tough, but I wanted to have a, a fun, uh, a fun job. So it's, and I work yeah. with my father every day. Uh, we have, so some days we, we don't exchange, we don't talk together, but it's because we know <laughs> yeah. we have what we have to do, but, uh, yep. it's, it's always fun to, to share and develop a new machine here in the shop. We, we have some beautiful, uh, non-conventional machine. To make drums, so uh, we we build really? our own tooling here. Uh, all the the machine to to drill holes into the drums, uh, some machine to for the finishing process. So we build our own machine. In this shop. It's, That's awesome. That's very cool. That's like what you're paying for when you buy your drums. Is this one of a kind kind of proprietary stuff where? In the end, they're all round drums that we hit and play for fun. But but the process and the story and all that, I think yeah. people yes. really enjoy. Yes, you know? and when you you buy a Ebenor drum, it's like you you yes you buy the what you see maybe on the website on or you see. But when you we we exchange or when you uh, drummer come to the shop, you see what we how we build our drums. We may we make our lugs every single lugs one at a time so <laughs> you see that wow. okay it's it's 
handmade from from scratch. So it's it's not only uh, from generic, but generic stuff are good because uh, it's always a question of time. But I decided decided to that we had a, enough time to make our drums parts and everything. So it's uh, it's a plus yeah. value to the uh, the customer who buy dr- Ebenor drums, and it's it's an experience. So it's it's not just a drum, it's an experience that the people are buying. So. For sure. Very well put. Uh, is there anything we can look forward to from Ebonor that you're like really excited to be producing soon? You've talked about some stuff along the way, but like yeah. next big things that so, you're working on? Yeah, yeah. We have a so next big thing for, for us, it's the the uh, we we will be at the UK drum show uh, this year in September, end of September. Cool. So I will not be there, but uh, my ambassador in the UK, so Anthony Johns and Matt Parr, uh, my, these are my two ambassador in the UK, will be at the, the show to showcase uh, some of Ebenor drums, the Heavy Feather kit, and all the snare drums that we have. Nice. And uh, some things new that is uh, that I'm cooking at the moment, it will be a, another snare collection, but not for now. I will not... <laughs> say any more about that, but not for now because we focus more on the anti brass uh, snare drums and kit. We we don't have uh, uh, show a lot of kit on social media, so we have sure. a beautiful recording uh, that was made by my good friend Sebastien here in Quebec about the anti brass uh, snare drums. Uh, we have also um, uh, uh, Another partnership here in Quebec is the Dramatech. Uh, my friend Nico is a is a teacher, so uh, he's teaching uh, to uh, a student with Hebenor drums, and uh, he's also um, it's a showroom uh, in a city here in Saint Hyacinth. Uh, we can uh, showcase Hebenor drums who pe- to people who would like to see it. So uh, that's another that's partnership great. that we have at the moment. So that we are proud. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're smart. You're you're moving fast, but you're not moving too fast, and you're yeah. not taking on Just more action. than you yeah, it's, can it's handle. Staying in action is the key. So, yeah, yeah, that's true, man. That's great. Uh, so, I'm looking at you. You guys have a YouTube channel that I'll put in the link in the description. What, yeah. uh, what you want to tell people your website and your social media and all that stuff. And yes, yeah. for so for people who would like to to see uh, to see us, uh, we we put a lot of uh, photo video uh, on Instagram. So it's Ebenor Percussion on Instagram. We have uh, uh, the Facebook, Ebenor Percussion, or the website, ebenorpercussion.com. Uh, that's that's the main, uh, the three main uh, channel that we have. You, we have also our YouTube. If you wanted to listen our, uh, about some uh, recording, you just have to, recording, you just have to put, to type Ebenor on YouTube. So you, you will have everything. Yep, perfect. It's kind of smart because Ebenor, if you search it, you find you guys. There's not many different like some some things. If you search, you find a thousand things. <laughs> it's always just Ebenor. So that was that was smart. Um, so uh, real quick before we end, I want to thank Brandon Green and uh, Jay Kulkarni yeah. again Thanks, for Thanks, guys. the recommendation because you are you've represented your brand very well today on the on the show and the, and you're like yes the show is drum history but you're like modern drum history. I mean ten years in and you're already. You've done a lot in that that amount of time, so you should uh, be very proud and thanks. represented your brand well. And thanks to you, uh, Bart. I really appreciate the opportunity about the to make the Drum History podcast. Uh, I'm a big fan of the podcast. Uh, I think I have listened about of the all the episode uh, about drum oh, for you. sure, but uh, the <laughs> Nilpert uh, series. But thanks for the, making all that for the community. It's so much appreciated. My pleasure. And and on that note, just while we're talking, I'll tell people I'm going to try and do more of those gear episodes. Uh, Paul Wells is coming back on. We're going to do he's he did the, the Neil series. He's going to do um, a look at Tony Williams gear. And then I've got one about Lars Ulrich's drum sets that's going to be out soon. That is like a mega deep dive. Um, <laughs> so people can look forward to that. So um, anyway, Will, thank you very much for being here. Congrats on all your success. And uh, maybe someday at a drum show, we'll meet in person. Uh, but we will. We until will. then, yes, thank you for being here, my friend. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure.